Hi and welcome to another math lesson, this time on graphs of a function. Okay, now so far we've looked at various representations of functions and this time specifically we're going to look at um, functions represented by graphs. But what have we looked at so far? First of all we looked at function represented as a rule. So for example we asked something like x, what happens if we double u? Now, that is typically um, expressing a function as a sentence or in words. Okay, the next thing we can represent a function with is in a table. We can use a table to represent it, and we did very informally look at numbers. So, 0, what happens if I W? I got 0. 1, what happens if I W? I got 2. Okay, and we looked at various numbers. I recall we looked numbers like negative 4. What happens if I W? I get negative 8. And this side was our input, our input represented by X, and our output is represented by Y, or we can just call it FX. FX also represents the output. Okay, now another way in which we can represent functions was in the function formula okay, and this specific one is I'm doubling every x value that I'm given in other words I'm multiplying it with 2 2 times x the next representation we're now going to look at is the graphical representation okay now before we go to the graphical representation uh, let me just explain to you a little bit what it's like representing a function graphically an input and an output graphically is almost like going to the movies um, to find your seat number okay so what do I mean when you buy a movie ticket you get a seat number you can most of the times you choose a seat number but let's say you got a seat number and your seat number is H12 H12. Someone else also got a seat number. They have, let's say, B7. Okay, those are two examples of seat numbers. Now, what this is is actually coordinates. Coordinates. One tells you the row, and the other one tells you the seat. Okay, or we can say the row and the column. You are in row B in column 7. Okay, so let me show you a seat plan. And the coordinates now tells you where must you go to find your correct seat. So this first one tells you you must go to row 7, uh, sorry, row H. So you walk and you walk to row H. So here you're going, walking up, 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 up until you get to row H. And then you must go to seat number 12. So then you walk across, bumping through all the people. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go. We're at seat number 12. Okay, let's see what your friend that has B7. A friend of yours has B7. So he also starts, that's now kind of assuming that you come in here through the door. Okay, starts there. He's told he must go to row B, seat 7. So he goes to row B, that's there, so he stops there, and so first he goes vertically upwards, and then he goes horizontally until he go, gets to B7. There's his seat. So do you notice how every point or every seat here has got a specific, kind of like a name and a surname, and everyone in this row has the same name, and they have different surnames. Everyone in this column has different names. We have name A, name B, name C, but we have the same surname. Kind of, you can look at it like that. Now, co that that's what we call a coordinate system, where we have a horizontal and a vertical um, information. So, what does that look like on a graph? Well, here's a Cartesian plane. A co it's called Cartesian plane, uh, named after a guy uh, with the name Rene Descartes, and he just kind of probably discovered the thing and um, used it to represent functions. Okay, so here we can also see we've got horizontal information and we also have vertical information. Okay, now the only difference between this and a movie seat is, well, there's 
probably a few differences, but this time instead of first going vertical, we first go horizontal. And instead of using A's and things like that, we're going to use the coordinate system X, Y. So X represents how far we're going horizontal, Y represents how far we're going vertical. If X is positive, uh, our starting position is called the origin here in the center, and that means it's 0, 0. I'm going nowhere horizontally and nowhere vertically, so I stay at the origin. That's called the origin. Okay. Um, if x is negative, we go in that direction. If x is positive, we go in that direction. Is y, if y is negative, we go downwards because y is vertical, and upwards if y is positive. But you get the picture uh, just now if we do some examples. Now, looking at this example that we just wrote down. Um, earlier is what happens if I multiply x with 2 well if I ask 0 the question what happens if I multiply with 2 I get 0 and now we can write this as x comma uh, se or actually semicolon x semicolon y so I've got x is 0 and then so my input is 0 and my output is 0 as well okay um, for this one when my input is 1 my output is 2 for this one, if my input is negative 4, my output is negative 8. So let's go represent those three points, or color in those three points on the coordinate system. Here's my graph, and the first one says 0, 0. Now remember what I said, on this coordinate system, it is clear that, um, well that's the, the origin, and my first point says I should stay at the origin. No points up, no points down, no points left, nor no points right. Okay, the next one says 1, 2. So starting at my origin, I must go one step for x. So x is 1, there x is 1. And two steps up, y is 2. That is the coordinate. That's the point 1, semicolon 2. This point's name or is 1 semicolon 2, name and surname. The next one, negative 4 and negative 8. So starting at the origin, I go negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the negative direction. Okay, And you also see, oh, I see x is negative 4. And from there, I go negative 8. So I now I must go vertically. I go all the way to negative 8. And that is my third point. Now, if I were to do this for every single value of x, every value you can imagine for x, 0, 0,1, 0, 0,5, negative uh, 2, 4, 3, 7, whatever number you can imagine, if I were to do that for every single value that x can take, is allowed to take, this graph will, in the end, form a straight line. In other words, every point on that straight line, if I choose every any point on this straight line, so for example, I choose the point x equal to 4, and I go up, what happens if x is equal to 4? Well, when I get to my graph, I see that means my output is equal to 8. What about a number like 2.5? So 2.5, what happens if x is 2.5? Well, I go up to my graph and see, well, when x is two and a half, my output is five, and I can see oh, double f double two and a half gives me five. So this information is represented instead of having a formula, it's now represented in a graph. Okay, now I can ask, okay, what must x be so that my output is something like negative three? So negative three, what must x be? I want to know if my output is negative three, what must my input be. Well, if I go up, I see, oh, my input must be negative one and a half. So if y is negative three, x must be negative one and a half. And um, we can look at more examples. Let me just quickly show you two more examples. You see, not all graphs are straight lines. This graph is called a parabola, and it actually is the line well, the graphical representation of fx equal to x squared. 
That's the graphical representation of that function. Okay, remember we saw in this function, when x was equal to 0, my output will be equal to 0 times 0 is 0. So it also passes through the origin, and there we see there's 0 for x and 0 for y. Then we also saw, well, when x is 1, y is 1 times 1, so y is also 1. Okay, and there we see, oh, when x is 1, y is 1. Okay, then we saw negative 4. If x is negative 4, I get positive 16. And we see here on the negative 4 side, if I go up, I get positive 16. So negative 4, positive 16 is also a point on that line. Remember, a line can be considered to be a collection of points. These points are just so close to each other then that they look like a line. And every point satisfy this condition. So for example, if I asked what will happen to 2, I go up to my graph and I see, well, my result will be 4. So this graph is a representation of 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. Uh, let's say 3.5 times 3.5 will give you 12 and a quarter. And so forth. Any possible value you can choose for x will be represented by this function if I start at x go all the way up to my graph and I find my y value associated with it now I can maybe ask a question okay what will x be if my y value was 8 if my y value is 8 what was x so I go sideways I go sideways and then I go down to see what x value would I have found and it looks like 2 comma almost 2 comma 8 or something like that 2 comma 8 I'm not exactly sure but I also see well that's one possibility another possibility is on the other side it could also be negative 2 comma 8 remember what we said that the uh, that x squared an even power can never be negative Okay, so the output can never be negative. We saw that y is therefore bigger or equal to 0 all the time. And look at that. Okay, here's my y values. My graph never goes below the x-axis. In other words, it never goes to the negative side of the y values. It always stays on the positive side and on the positive side. So even the range and the domain is captured in the graph. So let's look at one more. Here is another funny looking function. This is the function for fx12 divided by x. Well, how many times does x divide into 12? I'm not going to go into the detail of this one, but rather I'm just going to show you that when x is 1, the input is 1, we knew that the output was 12. So that point is x is 1 and y is 12. Then we saw also, well, when x was 0, we never got an answer. And if we go up, 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 even if you were to zoom out of this graph and you go up, 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 forever and ever and ever, you see that you never reach this blue graph, this blue curve. And if I go down, 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 if I go down forever and ever, I never reach the other side of this blue curve. So do you notice that this curve has two sides? It's got a side here and it's got a side here. And you might also remember that we said that the output, if I have a fraction, and my input is somewhere in that fraction. This fraction can never be equal to zero. That fraction can never equal zero. So my output can never be zero. And that's the y value. And we also see that. There's my output and my graph. Even though it gets closer and closer to zero, like dividing a cake, okay, it gets less and less and less, or smaller and smaller and smaller, but it never actually reaches the zero line.
and lines like this that a graph gets closer and closer to but it never reaches is called asymptotes but we'll learn a little bit more when we get to the hyperbola which is what this graph is called okay but I think that's enough for now I'll see you later in the other in the next lesson now we're going to look at the straight line and all the properties etc etc good luck and enjoy